So right off the bat, he's saying, this is the Christ. This is the Lamb of God. And that term that he's using, the Lamb of God, again, it's extremely important because we're going to go back. We're going to look at two instances for the Lamb of God. One is with Abraham before the law of Moses was even established. And then also in the law with the Passover lamb being representative of Jesus Christ himself. These are where we derive you know, the, all the meaning and importance behind the Lamb of God and Jesus being the Lamb of God. And how important these events were, especially that Passover lamb in the Old Testament, just carries through for, for millennia of people observing the sacrifices, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, the lamb being sacrificed and Jesus embodying that lamb and being representative of that lamb to where, and we're not going to cover all the references in the New Testament where he is called, you know, the lamb of God. It's not just in, in John chapter one, but we, I wanted to start reading here because that just the reference to the Lamb of God is 100% tied in with uh, he that takes away the sin of the world. Right? The, the, the sacrificial lamb was made for forgiveness of sins. It was made for deliverance. It was made for that, uh, that atonement. And we'll get into all that as we go through the actual scriptures regarding that. Verse number 30 says, This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now, we know that John the Baptist was born physically in this world before Jesus Christ because Elizabeth was already with child when Mary conceived. Right? And, and, and you know, she was informed of that also, that, you know, that your cousin also is... Uh, with child who was considered barren, right? Another miraculous birth, at least in the world's eyes. And that's, you know, it was still a physical conception with, with an actual father and mother, but um, it's still miraculous in the sense that she was barren. She didn't have any children and she was already past age, yet was still able to give birth to John the Baptist, who was, who was used greatly of God. But why, so why does he say he was um, before me because he's got because he knows that this is Christ. He knows that this is the son of God. John the Baptist knew all this before Jesus even really started teaching that he's the son of God. He's the Christ. He's who they're looking for because he knew that the son of God, you know, is God and that's who they're looking for in a Messiah. It's important not to look past this because I, I've heard, and I, and I can't remember specifically who teaches this. It may be the Jews or the Judaizers, the people who look to the Jews for all their answers on understanding Scripture, which, by the way, don't go to the Jews to understand Scripture. Okay, don't think you could get some extra meaning behind what the Bible says. Oh, but let's go and, and, and read up on what the rabbis say and go talk to these guys and see, well, what do they think and what have they historically thought about Jesus Christ or about the Messiah and see how we can fit that in or what extra understanding. Look, they're going to steer you the wrong way. They didn't accept Christ when he came. What makes you think they have anything right about how the tradition should have been Regardless of what they did, even if some of the things they did, they still know to this day, it doesn't matter because they didn't accept Christ. If they're not accepting Christ today, don't worry about getting insight from them because they rejected Jesus Christ. 